I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. <clears throat> Today our topic is about Ahmadiyya. You know, one of you sent me an email in Patreon and uh, she said that he have a friend uh, and he is Ahmadiyya. You know, Ahmadiyya is just another stupid cult. Uh, it's even more stupid than Muhammad himself. And today we will cover all the stupidity of Ahmadiyya, but we will show you first the stupidity of the Muslims who refute the Ahmadiyya. You know, I went on YouTube and I type Ahmadiyya. You know, see what I, a video I can use. And then uh, this, this one appeared in front of me. You know, Mimi Hijab. <clears throat> as you know, Mimi Hijab is a big scholar. I mean, thanks to David Wood, he made him look like as if he is a scholar or something big. But that guy is just an idiot. <clears throat> when you ask him, your God, Allah, have part, he say, who say so? Your prophet say so. When he say, not a single Jew, not a single Jew believe that God has a son. And then we find the Quran say, no, the Jews believe in that. <laughs> and today this guy is making a new poo, poo So he met with Ahmadiyya guy in the park. And he wanted to get him busted. But how he got him busted? You know, he's very super intelligent. So this is Ahmad Mimi Hijab speaking to Ahmadiyya person. Ahmadis believe in the following. Number one, that there was Ghulam Ahmad came in India, you know, in the 1900s or whatever it was, and that he was a new prophet, a, a, you know, uh, a prophet that came after the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Here you see that Muhammad Hijab is a stupid idiot. He did not know what he is talking about. Because Ahmad Mirza Ghulam don't say that he is a new prophet. He claimed that he is the Messiah. I mean, how stupid are you to argue with somebody about his religion, saying that Ahmad Mirza Ghulam claimed to be a new prophet? So if he claimed to be a new prophet, why he called himself the Messiah? And then Mimi Hijab, he wanted to get this person busted. And then uh, and he was saying to him, me and you, we believe in what? In the Quran, which is make it more, more stupid even to say. Because those Ahmad Mirza Ghulam people, they believe in their own Quran. Because this guy, he come with the Quran, claiming it's come from Allah. And he claimed even it's better than the Quran of Muhammad. But uh, I don't want to waste your time, you know, because there are like many people, they interview in the conversation. So we will move the video a little bit where the, the butter and the cheese is located. Here, Muhammad uh, Hijab, he want to confirm to this person that me and you believe in the Quran, but remember that the Quran is the book of confusion. And Allah, he sent us a book nobody can understand. He says in the Quran that the Quran has two kinds of verses. That has uh, muhkamat verses, yes, um, unambiguous verses, yeah. unambiguous, and mutash... Unambiguous, unambiguous. So the Quran says there's ambiguous, ambiguous Quran. And why? Because you want to tell him 
don't try to explain the Quran because this is ambiguous Quran. It's a stupid Quran. Nobody knows what it means, save Allah. Do you, I mean, do you see the logic? So he want to convince the guy that he should not give interpretation for the Quran because the Quran is ambiguous, stupid book. Nobody knows what it does mean, save Allah. Shabi had ambiguous verses. The ones who have a problem with the heart will go to the ambiguous verses, yes, in order to try and uh, to try and justify, make a ta'wil, make some. You see what they do, brother? They go to ambiguous verses, trying to make explanation for them. Aha, uh -huh, I got you busted, uh, Mimi Hijab. Aren't you the same one who is going to do the same thing right now? I don't want to waste your time. We move to the minute 422. Mimi Hijab, now he is going to get the guy busted with no mercy, and he will grab him from his tail. How? What he will do? He will give him a verse from the Quran saying, the following. means the last prophet. The last prophet. No so how Mimi Hijab he got the guy busted? There's a verse in the Quran says, Bikasri ta khatimi khatimi. But if we go in the Quran, we will find it's not. Bikasri ta, you idiot. It is Fatha. So according to stupid Mimi Hijab, if it is Kasra, it's mean Muhammad the last prophet. If it's not Kasra, Muhammad is not the last prophet, but according to the reading we have in the front of us, it is Fatha. It is not Bikasri Ta, it is Fatha. For those who do not know what Kasra and Fatha mean, there's a little thing you put in the top of the letter. If it's in the top, we call it Fatha. If it's in the, uh, uh, sometimes even the Kasra can go up, like you can put it under Shadda, etc. But this is the usual thing. So if it's in the top, it is Fatha. If it's under the letter, we call it Kasra. So this potato he just said, remember, the Quran says, وَلَكِنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَخَاتِمِي نَبِيِّينَ But anyone who can read, read it to me. It is خَاتَمَ الْنَبِيِّينَ So this donkey even did not know how to read his Quran. Otherwise, maybe he is reading different uh, reading. You know, maybe Ibn Mas'ud. Because as you know, Quran is a stupid book. However, as long he was very focusing in the Kasra and the Fatha, obviously, that mean that will change the meaning. So if it's a Fatha, the meaning will change. If it's a Kasra, the meaning will change. Well, this is Fatha, so you are wrong. But let us focus together at the stupidity of Mimi Hijab and the Muslim Sunni. Trying to refute this idiot, who is Ahmadiyya. What is the answer that Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, that he cannot be a prophet? For Muhammad, he said he is the last of the prophet, according to this verse, according to Muslim understanding. And the funny is the one who says, don't try to give interpretation for the Quran because the Quran have part which ambiguous. But the verse here nowhere says that Muhammad is the last prophet, actually. This is why in the verse, if you read with me, this is chapter 33, verse number 40. It says that Muhammad, he don't have any of your men, is one of his children. Muhammad have zero kids. And he is the seal of the prophet. He's not the last prophet. The seal of the prophet here mean the one who, like, you know, uh, uh, when you go to the government, you ask them for a seal. To do what? To certify. So he is the one who certify. This is why the Quran keeps saying, Musaddiqan, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi. He certify, he believe in what is between his hand. So he is the seal who certify. And here you see the Quran mentioning something very important, that Muhammad, he have none of your, he is not the father of any of your men, which mean for the Arab at least, None of, uh, none of the Arab will take the business of Muhammad, which means will inherit the business of Muhammad, because Muhammad is doing the business. But even if it says he is the last prophet, here you see the stupidity of Mimi Hijab and the Muslim Sunni who try to refute the Ahmadiyya. Because simply, the guy, he claimed that he is the Messiah. He is not claiming to be a new prophet, you idiot. The Messiah already came. This is not a new person. This guy, he claimed to be the Messiah. So when you say to him that the prophet says he is the last prophet, that's because you're a certified idiot. And then he continue. He says, let me ask you a question. Now here, the things is getting intense, supposedly. Mimi Hijab is going to hit in the head. Let me ask you a question. Okay, what is the question, Mimi? Go. That Khatim and Khatim, Khatim and Khatim, that he's the seal of the prophets. 
and that he is the last prophet. Both. Seal and last. Last. Khatim. Seal and last. That's it. You know, just take it, okay? He's seal and last. Means last. Khatim. 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 Because that means last. See, well, with the kasra, you see? Khatim. Khatim. Not Khatim. We just showed you in the Quran, it says Khatim, not Khatim. In Arabic. Look, and if you don't believe me, go to Lisan al-Arab. Yeah, we, we go. We go to Lisan al-Arab. But we just show it to them, all of them, in the screen. It is Khatim, not Khatim. You are an idiot. But anyway, we don't want to waste our time with this idiot. This is not an excuse to believe in this guy or not, because simply he claimed to be the Messiah, and the Messiah is coming back. And look what Mimi Hijab he just did. He just said to the guy, you cannot believe in Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, who is claiming to be the Messiah because Muhammad is the last prophet. That's mean Mimi Hijab don't believe that the Messiah is coming back. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? As long as he cannot accept Ahmad Mirza Ghulam to be a prophet, and why? Because there is a verse in the Quran says that Muhammad is the last prophet. But Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he don't just claim to be a prophet, he claimed to be the Messiah who is back. So if that verse in the Quran saying that Muhammad is the last prophet and Mimi Hijab is using it to refute the one who claimed to be the coming, the one who is coming back, the Messiah who came back, that's mean what Mimi Hijab don't believe in the coming back of the Messiah. So this is a very stupid argument of the stupid Muslim Sunni, but what you can expect from people believe that they're a prophet, he is a prophet because he promised them an endless penis and women, her ass is one mile and shaitan take care from their anus and he sleep in their nose and he piss in their ears and he jump in their mouth and he play with their belly bomb and he rub himself around their penis. Those are the Muslim Sunni in front of us. And this guy, he is a Hanafi. He believed that if a person have sex with his mother, it's okay. And he is the same person who said to David Wood that Allah don't have body part. And he is the same person in the same location, in the same corner, with the same microphone, he said to the Christians in the park that yes, Allah can go inside the body of someone else, or he can have a body. So those are a bunch of hypocrites. They lie, they bend in the situation, the location. What about us as a Christians? How we can refute the Ahmadiyya? Forget about Mimi Hijab and the one who claimed that Muhammad is the last prophet, well, can you show me the prophecies of your prophet? Your prophet, he prophesied that the Arab, they will conquer the Roman. And to, uh, to avoid fighting the Turkish, and later the Turkish is the one who conquered the Roman, not your prophet. Your prophet, he claimed that the Roman will be victorious in Buddha Isunin. And then we calculate the number, we find this is absolutely false. Muhammad, he failed with the prophecy. Your prophet, he claimed that the, 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 the moon is split asunder and the judgment day is so near and nothing happened and there is no moon split. And this is a big fat lie. And your prophet is the one who claimed that the sperm of the man came in from the backbone and women have a sperm coming from her ribs. And this is absolutely another prophecy of lying because supposedly he's in us something nobody knows. It's your prophet too who told us that the sun set in murky water. In order to make it fix it, you try to say, oh, it appeared to Zulkarnain, but nowhere in the Quran it says appear. And you are the one who said to this guy, the Quran have two parts, ambiguous, ambiguous. The only ambiguous is you. Because when Allah, he says, he found it, he did not say he thought. So the Muslim, in one hand, they say to us, the Quran is so clear. It's so clear. Even the Quran says, وَفَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا We made this book with great details. And when Allah, he says, he found it. He found what? He found that the sun sitting in murky water. The Muslim, they try to fix it. They say, oh, it appeared to him. It appeared. So Allah, he forgot the word appear to him. Instead, he made a mistake and he says he found it. This is how the hypocrisy of this religion, to cover the bum of their prophet who is doing poo-poo left and right, they try to make it something different when the verse is so clear and the one is talking is Allah is not even the guy. Until he reached the sitting place of the sun, he found it sitting. It doesn't say he thought it was sitting. And you know what? What the point even of saying he thought is sitting if Allah will not fix him or fix his information? Do you, anyone, do you see anyone saying he, he's fixing information now? No. So he said he found it. He is reporting a find. And find is about a fact. If I say I found Mimi Hijab doing poo-poo in the top of the Quran, that means there was three things. There was Mimi Hijab, 
there was a Quran and there was a poopoo. And then that confirmed other things that he was in the top and then he did the poopoo in the top of the Quran and then the Quran was covered by poopoo. So when we say found it, we are not saying he thought, we are not saying maybe, we are not saying it's not clear. And we are saying, we are stating what he found, it's a fact. And then we find that this guy, Zulqarnain, he continued and he changed his direction. And then he found this rising place of the sun. And he found the sun rising in the people, you know. And then the story continued. And then he built a dam between Gog and Magog and us. And we know, all of us, we know. I mean, we have the satellite, they discover every inch in this earth. And until now, we did not find such a dam, damn you, Muhammad. And we did not find such billions of people who they are not a human, by the way. Those Gog and Magog, they are not like us. According to some description of the Muslims, they even they have ears like a tent and they sleep inside their ears, which is the right ear. And each one of them is so horny to the point before he die, he will have 1,000 baby before he die. So the ratio, the ratio of the, or the number between us and the, and the Gog and Magog is 1,000 to 1. So if we are 7 billion a human being, there's 7 trillion Gog and Magog, where are they? So when Muslims, they try to debate somebody about if your prophet is a prophet, my prophet is the last prophet, we laugh and we die laughing, and you know what you can expect. But let us go now to the Ahmadiyya. Ahmadiyya is one of the most stupid, funny religion. If you are an Ahmadiyya, please let me know. I will take your call. I will open my Skype for you. Let me open my Skype in case we have any Ahmadiyya. Just give me a second. If you are an Ahmadiyya and knowledgeable about your religion, please feel free. I will open Skype just for the Ahmadiyya today. Oh, all right. Okay, Skype is coming on. So if you're an Ahmadiyya, please feel free to call me. Text me first, you cannot call me. Text me and I will take your call. I will call you back. Uh, you know, the easiest way for us as a Christians to fight this cult, you need to know first that the Ahmadiyya uh, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he, he said that he is he came back to destroy Christianity. To destroy Christianity. And to destroy the cross. So you need to put in your consideration as a Christian that Ahmadiyya is a very satanic antichrist cult. This is his target. This guy, he did not hide it. He said, I came to destroy Christianity and to break the cross. Why he said that? Because simply Muhammad, he said in the hadith, as you know, Muhammad, he made many poo, poo because he hid the cross, he hid the cross, and he hid Jesus. So he said that the Messiah will come back and he will break the cross and he will kill the pig. So this guy, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he used a statement made by Muhammad to claim about himself, who is he? And then when they asked him, well, you know what? Okay, well, the cross is there. I mean, you did not destroy anything. He said, well, didn't I win many debate with the Christians? Which is very funny. What debate? I challenge any Muslim to come to me and call me right now so we can laugh at your debate. And I'm talking about Ahmadi, you know. But look what happened. When this guy, he claimed that he is going to come and destroy the cross, in one hand, he claimed that he was Mary for three years. He was a woman, he was Mary. And then after he become Mary for three years, he become Jesus. So this person is a transgender from female to a male. How? Don't ask. How? Don't tell. And then he continues saying. Actually, let us go and read. Uh, uh, I will give you the easiest way to destroy this cult. You know, if any Ahmadiyya, he spoke to you. You know, if you remember once I have a, a debate with the Ahmadiyya guy, and I asked him about uh, how his prophet, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, who claimed to be the Messiah, he died. He agreed that he died by cholera. By cholera. I searched in the internet right now, and I found two websites of an Ahmadiyya. This is one of them. alislam.org Muslim who believe in the Messiah Hazrat Mirza 
And here you see the stupidity of this religion. They, you know, in Arabic, we say Hadrat. They cannot even, I mean, this is a Messiah. He cannot even say Hadrat. What Hadrat? What is a Hadrat? There's not a thing in Arabic that's called Hadrat. So Hadrat means Mr. I mean, Mr. The Messiah, Mr. Messiah. Okay. So Hadrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Kaidan. This is the city where he supposed he's born in. So here they are answering about his death. Did Hazrat Mirza Ghulam die in objectionable death? Okay, how he died? They say here, certain Muslims shamelessly allege that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad died of cholera in a bathroom. This is a shameful lie. This is not based on any trustworthy source. There was nothing objectionable about his death. Well, look what happened. I searched for the same story in Ahmadiyya website. And I found an Ahmadiyya website in Arabic. Do you know what they say in the Ahmadiyya website in Arabic? They say, yes, he died by diarrhea and by cholera. But what's wrong with that? And they are not only saying that, they are saying this is how Allah proved that he is the Messiah. Let me open the other website. Where is the other website? I hope I did not lose it. Where it is, where it is. Give me a second. They are refuting the Muhammad and saying to them, well, those are who say such a thing, they are ignorant about Islam. And this is how Allah really, like he examined his messengers or he proved that those messengers are messenger from God. How? By making them die. Here we go, I found the website. Okay. This, uh, this is a, a website called Bisat Ahmadi. Bisat Ahmadi, and this is an Ahmadiyya website. And here they are defending his death, and they are speaking about how he died. I will post the link for you later. All right? And this is the article in Arabic. The death of uh, the promised Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Al-Qaidani, peace be upon him. To know how he died, I, I will use actually a Google translation. Let me do this actually first. I will use Google Translation for you. Let us use Google Translation. Hmm. The death of the promised Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. Kaidani, peace be upon him. As you see, this is their website. Oh, guys, you cannot see my screen. Oh, so, sorry, sorry for that. Let me open the screen. Okay, good. I apologize. Okay, then this is the website in Arabic, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. All right, this is the this is the official website of the Ahmadiyya. This is not Sunni. This is not Shia. This is not people who speak against them. This is made by the Ahmadiyya. And I did translate the same website using Google Translation. One click, translate. Here it says, he explained to us how he died. In order to know the details of the death of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, we will take the testimony of one of the natural writers, Professor Annie and uh, Adinson, the English writer and the author in India. So that testimony would be just and fair without any bias toward one side. So this is who, this is the Ahmad Mirza Ghulam people, using an article written by Annie uh, Adamson. She is a British woman, she lived in India at that time, during his death. Okay. Uh, and she said, supposedly, she is recording the last moments of the life of this person or the death of this person. And obviously she is, you know, she is a follower of him. You know, the funny is when they say a rich, a rich person, they don't tell you that this person believe in him or not. You see how they deceive? 
But look what he says. This is now the trustworthy story. It's worth nothing that Ahmed had told his family mem uh, uh, member. Remember, this is Google translation. At those and those close uh, followers that his death was imminent. So he told them, "I'm dying." And after telling them, he received another revelation saying that what it's mean. Leaving, then leaving, the death is near. So the, he re received revelation saying, leaving and leaving, death is near. This is from Allah coming. And he said to him, don't trust the moral life, it is going to be destroyed. Of course, that last revelation left no doubt about the, his imminent death. So his wife, she go to Lahore, uh, immediately to be next to him as usual and did not stop working I mean you can read the whole thing we don't want to read the whole story but the, we will go to the important here it says that this person Ahmad Mirza Ghulam he becomes so ill he become so ill all right let's read together uh... So she took a taxi, blah, 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 okay. Uh, he becomes so ill, the doctor were called to see him. Uh, it's time for a prayer. One of them re replied, yes, sir, it has come, but he was not able to get up. Okay, here we need to stop. How this guy, he claimed to be the Messiah, who resurrect people from death, who make people who is, they are dead, come back to life. Who heal the leper, the blind, and everyone is sick by just touching them. He himself, he is horribly, you know, uh, sick. Even he fainted due to his severity of disease. What disease is that? It was the cholera. And if you check right now, what cholera cause? Cholera cause uh, diarrhea, shit. Excuse my language. And then look what they do. This is the Ahmadiyya. They are trying to prove to us that Ahmad Mirza Ghulam is really true, a prophet of God. How? Because he died of diarrhea. As for the opponent blame that the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, because his death of his uh, uh, holiness, his, the death of his holiness is from diarrhea disease, it's ignorance of the religion of Islam above all. Maybe translation is not coming correct. Let me show you in Arabic. So what they are saying, that those who say, well, how in the world he is the Messiah and he died because of the area? The answer is, well, you are ignorant about Islam then. Actually, this is a proof. This is a proof that he is the Messiah. Why? Because he died because of his shit. Read carefully with me if you are a person who speaks Arabic. Let me zoom in. Dying by such a disease, which is diarrhea, shit, is a certification from Allah for him. Allah saying shahada that this person is the Messiah. Why? How? Because he died because of diarrhea. So what the proof that this guy is the Messiah, he died because of shit. I mean, do you see how stupid a human being, how far he can go? Uh, Muhammad Khatam, uh, you heard about my hobby, I block Muslim who won debate about me. Or you can go and get all those who they, I block them. Uh, and see if they won. And I challenge you to download the debate and put it in your YouTube. As long as they won, then why you don't download it, put it in your page? They won, my friend. I heard that all those I have blocked them, they are a bunch of kids. Are you one of them? Call me, text me in Skype, and we will take you for a snack. If you are an Ahmadiyya, please let me know. Uh... Guys, don't send me text message if you are not a Muslim. I will block you. Literally. You're you're just be annoying, you know? You are being annoying. The chat is for everybody. You want to debate me only, not to text me, not to say hello. 
Now to give me a comment, Skype is only open for the Muhammadan. If you are a Muhammadan, Ahmadiyya specifically, you are welcome to text me immediately. If there is no Ahmadiyya, we will take a Muslim Sunni for a snack. So, here you notice how the stupidity of this cult is. The guy, he died because of shit, so how he can be the Messiah? I do not even need to read anything about him. I mean, this guy is the most stupid idiot ever, and he is made by the British Intelligent. The British Intelligent, he was an employee of Her Majesty the Queen. And the British, they need people to volunteer in their army during the occupation of India. Muslim, they reject that, because simply this is against Islam. So they made Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. And he ordered them, there's no shame and there's no sin if you join Her Majesty the Queen army. This is the whole point. And the, the Western, they created many of those. They created some in Yemen, some in Syria, some in Egypt. You know, always they have somebody. They claim that he is sent by God and he is a Muslim. And then right away he ordered the people to join the Western army. It doesn't matter what it is, which one, French or British or whatever. Uh, but uh, uh, to show you one of the stupid things, or some of the stupid things, this Mirza Ahmed Ghulam, he said. Just to show you how evil he is. He said that Yeshua, 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 the, the Messiah, he used to love hookers. And maybe that because he used to have a lot of relationship previously with them. And this is why there is no way a man, he is decent, he will let a woman, she is young, touching his hair with perfume. This is the book, it's called Al Khaza'un al Ruhiyya, volume number 11, page number four, uh, 29. Let me see if I can find it in their own website. This is how filthy this religion is. This is Antichrist. And the funny is, this person, he claimed to be the Messiah. Can you believe it? He himself. He claimed to be the Messiah. Uh, in the same book, variant number 10, page number 296, Mirza Ghulam, he said, Yeshua, Yeshua, when he was on the cross, he could not appear in his full human appearance as a decent person to the mankind. Why? Because people, they knew that he used to drink alcohol like crazy. This is how we speak about his previous life, supposedly. He is the Messiah, remember? And this is in his book. And then he continued. Uh, there was a whore she sat next to the Messiah. And she tried to uh, uh, tempt him. And sometimes she tried to touch his head with perfume. And sometimes she try to hug his foot. And sometimes she try uh, to make her hair go over his body or his, his, his feet. Uh, and when she do that, the Messiah was horny. And if one of them, he try to stand up against this behavior,
he don't allow him. Why? Because in the Messiah, he was young and he's horny. This is a collection in front of me, actually, in Arabic. Let me do this. <laughs> Let us do this. Very, very evil, disgusting cult. And the whole point is to make the Messiah an evil person. This is another satanic Mohammedan cult, you know. And by the way, the, the site in the front of me is a Muslim website. This is not my website. This is a, not a Christian website. Uh, I will use Google Translation. The quotation is the one in blue. Let me see if I can make the uh, page smaller. I don't know, this page here coming really weird. Uh, give me a second, please. Maybe we can make it easier to read, yeah. All right. Uh, if we zoom too much. For some reason, the, with the translation, the there's some text is disappearing. Okay, so when the Christian, uh, 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 the translation here is really weird, you know. Uh, here it says, when, when, the, when Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he was attacking the Christians, he said, uh, I don't know why the translation is coming like that. Yeah, translation is very weird. I mean, let us see this one. Maybe this one is better. Okay. Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he said, Jesus could not, when he was on the cross, appear in his image as a biased man because people knew that he was drinking alcohol heavily. And this habit were not uh, uh, like... Uh, uh, were it during the period before, so they knew him from before. This guy is a heavy drinker. <laughs> and now, if we ask this filthy creature who died because of shit, where do you get this information from? And how you are claiming to be the Messiah? So you you used to be a filthy person before. What happened to you now? You are better. And here you see the reference of his book. Al Khazai in Ruhiya, variant number 10, page number 296. And then he continues saying here. Uh, about the Messiah. That Jesus he used to have special thing for, for hookers. Perhaps the reason was due to his previous relationship with them. And here translation is not coming right. Speaking about a woman, how a hooker, she is trying to touch his feet. How he allow her to do that with her hair. And you see the reference again in the front of your eyes. And here he continue attacking Jesus again. He said that a hooker, beautiful hooker, she sat next to Jesus, trying to provoke him or to tempt him or to make him horny. She massaged his head with a perfume, and she hugs his feet, which means she put her she put her feet or his feet on her breast. And sometimes she passes her beautiful black hair over his feet and play on his knees. This is a translation, uh, you know, English translation. But anyway, this is how filthy, this is how low class he is. And now here, this guy, maybe, maybe you, you are asking yourself, how in the world this guy is saying this and he claimed to be the Messiah? This is the debate he is trying to make it, supposedly, against the Christians, saying to them, this is your Christ in the Bible, but all of us, we knew that this is absolutely false. This is how they try to refute us about our Bible. So this person supposedly is using our Bible against us. All of us, we knew the story of the women she 
wipe the feet of the Lord by perfume. And she worshipped him. This guy, he made her that she is trying to tempt him. And Jesus, he liked her. And he wanted to sleep with her. And obviously, he used to have a lot of relationship with a lot of women. So this is the guy trying to prove the Christian to be wrong. And I am the true Messiah. What you wrote about him in the Bible is absolutely false. Uh, but if we go in the, in the book of Luke, you know, read the story, you will see that this is absolutely false. This is not really what happened. The woman, she cried. The verse says that she, she washed my feet with her tears. She is asking for forgiveness. That's why she is crying. This filthy man, he made that this is about Jesus. He liked prostitution and he sleep with them. So Ahmadiyya as a cult is a very disgusting satanic cult. This person is obviously very filthy and he focuses in Christianity very much because the Muslims will kill him if he try to fight the Muslim believe because he himself obviously he don't believe in what Muslim believe too that's why he brought his own book claiming it is a revelation from Allah and he tried to make it look like it's an Arabic the same as the Arabic of the Quran and here you see the find the funny thing about this person uh, the Muslim they say nobody can make Quran but he made his own Quran if you read it it's the same it sound the same it's exactly sound the same If we continue reading about this man, let us see some of his prophecies. One of the prophecies of Mr. Qaidani, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, that there is a way to, uh, uh, to resurrect flies and insect from death. If they did not if their death is not more than two hours or three hours maximum. If you do it in a very soft, if you put the fly under very soft salt and then you put ashes in the top of it, she will come back alive again and she will live. Even if she's dead. So the fly died, you can try it. You spray a fly by detergent, you know, I mean, sorry, that, that uh, like a spray for, for insect and you kill the fly and then put it under salt and then put some ashes if you have a fireplace in the top of the salt and then the fly will come back to life and this is the discovery of Allah Allah told him how to resurrect the flies and insect from death but he could not resurrect any human being and it's very funny to speak about resurrecting a fly and he himself died because of diarrhea and this is in the book let me give you the reference uh, it's called Haqiqatul Wahi Lil Ghulam Al Qiyadani, page number 24. The, the truthful of the inspiration of the Ghulam Qaidani, page number 24. So if you are an Ahmadiyya, please uh, text us, call us. We will make you read the reference for us and confirm how stupid your Ahmadiyya is. And then he continues saying, uh, He mentioned a story about a ship. In the book, it's called the Barahin al Ahmadiyya, page number 167. Barahin means uh, the proofs, the proofs of Ahmadiyya. That there is a ship. And this ship was drawn for 12 years. She wasn't, the ship was in the deep ocean for 12 years. And then Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he brought the ship from under the water and everybody inside the ship is alive after, 20, after 12 years. 
Remember, 12 years under the water. Um, Mr. Uh, uh, Mirza Ghulam, may Allah sanctify him and sanctify his secrets. I think this is like a way to praise, praise him. Pulled out a ship that had been a, sink, a sinking for 12 years with all the passenger alive. And uh, uh, in one occasion, I don't know, like, uh, let me, let me go, hold on, hold on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the, the translation in English sometimes make you, make you confused. I have to go to the Arabic one. Yeah. Uh, and once he broke the leg of the angel of death because he was upset from him because he killed or he took the soul of one of his followers. The reference for that is the book, it's called Izaratul Awham, Fathul Islam, page number 226. And the stories, they continue, one after one after one after one. And again, this is a Muslim website, I did not, you know, I mean, I did not work hard to find it or to look for it, it's just a stupid website as the rest of Muslim website, collecting, you know, statement of what this person, he said, and what uh, what he believed. Uh, as you notice, all cults, all of them, they try to use the name of the Messiah in order to get approval. All cult, Muhammad he wanted the Messiah. Muhammad he say the same. The Messiah he is going to come back. We are waiting for him. Allah, you know, took him up to the sky. Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he come back. He says, okay, well, you know what? I am the Messiah. I just came back. And you know, I like what the Christian did to him one day. They come to his door and they brought to him a bunch of people who cannot walk, people who cannot talk, people who cannot see. And they said to him, well, if you are the Messiah, then do what the Messiah can do. What Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he did, he closed the door. He went inside. If you are the Messiah, a Muslim saying to me, without website, CP is powerless. Thank you very much. Guys, without website, CP is powerless. Okay, you know what we can do? But remember, those are Muslim website. Without website, CP is powerless. <laughs> so what do you want to use? This is the internet, you idiot, son of Muta. I mean, the stupidity of the Muhammadan is beyond imagination. Right? Uh, Muhammad Khatam, as long as you are not a fake Muslim. Are you a fake Muslim too? Why you don't text me? Not right now. And then let me talk to you. Huh? Perfect Dawah is a fake Muslim. Are you a fake Muslim? Why you don't text me right now and let us see how... Guys, who, who of you here would like to see how good is Muhammad Khatim is? All of us. So I ask you, Mr. Muhammad Khatim, to prove to us that you are not a fake Muslim. I have a feeling that you are even a female. I don't know, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that somebody closed the door of the van over your private part and you lost it. Otherwise, prove me wrong. Text me in Skype, call me, and let us see how a strong Muslim, how he can function. What do you think? Do you dare? Coward. You complain. You cry. And we, you know, fry. 
we fry Islam, we fry Muhammad, and you just claim, you know, uh, uh, this guy is a fake. Well, if you are fake Muslims, none of you is not a fake Muslim. All of you, Muhammadan, are fake Muslims. Muhammad himself is the fake, first fake Muslim. Muhammad is the first one who did not follow his teaching. Muhammad, he told the Muslim, don't look at the women, she is not yours, and he was going to, he went to his own son and he flirted with the wife. He told the Muslim, if you see a woman in front of you, if you, if you put your head down, put your head down. And when a woman, she walked by, he was looking at her ass until he became so horny. And then he jumped at his wife, Zainab, when she was doing tanning leather. All of you are fake Muslims. And I agree with you, all of you are dumb, stupid idiots. But anyway, we go back to our topic as long as there is no Abdul there to join us. Uh, so as you see, the people of Mirza Ghulam, they wanted to prove to us that, that their Messiah is a true Messiah. How? Because simply, if you die because of diarrhea, this is a certif certification from Allah. I mean, you notice here how different is the website of the Muslim Ahmadiyya in Arabic from the website you have in English. In English, they say, okay, he died because of disease, yes. Uh, 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 we are going to read for you an article made by uh, a woman. She is a, a British woman, but obviously she is one of his followers. She is dumb. But even in the English website, they agree that he died in, because of his illness. They even do massage for him every half hour, every 15 minutes. And even in their website, they say, in the one they are trying to fight the argument, they say he died after he went to the bathroom. Read carefully. This is what the Ahmadiyya are trying to prove to us. They say, this is their website. This is official website. I will post the link for you. She mentioned that he felt he need to go to the washroom again. Do you see the diarrhea? The guy, he kept going to the bathroom but was too weak, and this is absolutely happened to you if you are having a severe diarrhea, because simply whatever food you eat is going to go. It doesn't stay. But was too weak to go to the bathroom. So the argument were made in the bath and the room for him. Uh, the arrangement, sorry, listen carefully. And this is what happened truly. He did not die in the bathroom, he did die in his room, which became a shit room. So he died over his shit. He did shit in his bed and he died. So arrangements were made in the room for him to, re to relieve himself. After finishing, he was in the bathroom. But you just said he cannot go to the bathroom. What finishing is your room? He cannot go to the bathroom no more. Arrangement made made for him to reveal himself in the bedroom. He felt nausea and vomit, and after he came back to the bed, he was so weak that he almost collapsed into the bed. His wife became alarmed, but he told her that it was that was decree to happen was finally happening. And this is supposed to from his book about himself, that he is going to die. So what happened, this guy? He died and he fell in the top of his shit. And this is the one they claim that he is the Messiah. And here we ask ourselves, as long as this person, he believe that the Messiah was saved and he is the Messiah. And then Allah, he sent him to India. And then he appeared in India after 2,000 years. How come Allah saved him from the cross, but he did not save him from his shit? Let me send you this website here. This is official website of the Ahmadiyya for those who want to read this article, which is approved by the Ahmadiyya themselves. So they cannot, they, they cannot say, oh, this is a propaganda against us. This is, this is their official website. 
All right, and this is the Arabic one. Let me send it to you too. But this one, I need to shorten the link because there's Arabic uh, title in the top. Uh, shorten. And this is the one in Arabic for those. In the, in the Arabic one, they say that this is how Allah, he proved that he is the Messiah. Why? Because he died because of the area. This is what we are showing on the screen right now. And this is the link for you. So according to the Ahmadiyya, if you are the true Messiah, you die because of the area. <laughs> Any Ahmadiyya here, he can call us and read. Look what it says. فَإِنَّ الْمَوْتَ بِهَادَ الْمَرَضِ هُوَ بِمَثَابَةِ الشَّهَادَةِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تعالى. كَمَا سَنُثْبِتُ ذَلِكَ إن شاء الله. And dying because of diarrhea. It is a certification from Allah. Praise be to Allah. As we will prove to you. Any Muslim Ahmadiyya want to answer? That the only proof you have that Ahmadiyya Ahmad Mirza Ghulam is the Messiah that he because he died because of shit. Any Muhammadan? Uh, and now they are comparing how Muhammad he died and how Ahmad Mirza Ghulam he died. They say it's the same. Both they die because of shit. Somehow, shitty death. They are saying that he died even in the same time with like Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad Khatim. You know what? Your name is Khatim, which means anus. So get lost. Don't you know that Khatim means anus too? And your prophet was Khatim ul Anbiya. He was the anus of the prophet. Muhammad Khatim, he won't debate me only vase to vase. Your name is Khatim. That's meaning you debate only anus to anus. Do we have any brave Muslims, especially Ahmadiyya, want to say anything about what we said? Maybe you are lying. Who is an Ahmadiyya wanna call me right now and say the link you post for us and you showed in the screen, those two links are not the official Ahmadiyya website. Who is an Ahmadiyya wanna call us and tell us why and how that Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, the proof that he is the Messiah, that because he died because of the area. How that proof that he is the Messiah? How the Messiah who healed the leper according to the Quran he made the blind see. He resurrected people from death. He died because of diarrhea. And by the way, do you, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam people, do you keep his diarrhea in the museum? Like if we go right now to Ahmad Mirza Ghulam University or museum or uh, uh, center, are we going to find some of his diarrhea dried up and saved in a jar? Any Muhammadan from the group of Mirza Ghulam? Because listen, if the shit of Ahmad Mirza Ghulam is saved, we can send it to the laboratory and we can check really how he died. And we can see if the bacteria inside his anus, they were coming from Allah. Because you never know. Any Mirza Ghulam people here. Huh? Any Abdul? Hmm. And by the way, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he claimed to be the same as Muhammad in some, in many places. As an example, he hear uh, plants talking, 
he hear rocks talking he hear animal talking and this is exist in his book the truth of the inspiration page number 24 Any Mohammedan here would like to say anything? Hmm? Any Abdul? In the book, it's called Dhamimatul Wahi. Page number 22, he said, I am the seen of the Lord, giver he sent me on the tap of 100. To refresh and renew the religion and to break the cross and to turn off the light of Christianity and to establish the Sunnah, which means the practice of Muhammad. But he did not do any of those. And in the same page, he said, I am, the, I, mean, I am the promised Messiah. I am the promised Mahdi. But the Messiah is not the same as a Mahdi. This guy is a Mahdi, and he is the Messiah at the same time. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us and tell us why this cult is messed up? Why this stupid cult is so stupid? Anyone? And by the way, I'm thinking to have a diarrhea. I mean, you can buy a medicine from the pharmacies and you will have a diarrhea. I hope that will make me a profit for the Muslims. Actually, I'm willing to make like containers and put them for sale after that. And for sure, you pay for shipping and handling, if you don't mind. So the proof that this guy is the true Messiah, that he died because of diarrhea, this is how you prove it to us? What kind of logic this logic is? What kind of stupid, you know, why this guy, he is even dead? I mean, isn't it Muhammad, he said, supposedly, that the Messiah will come and he will rule for 40 years. Some, they say, 70 years. They don't know even what, what, what he say. And then after that, the judgment day will happen. Okay, this guy, he came. Did the judgment day come? Did the Muslim rule the world? When this guy, he said, that he is going to come to, uh, to, uh, uh, to destroy the cross, copying what Muhammad, he accepts Sahih Muslim. But look what Sahih Muslim says, that when the Messiah come, nobody would need money. Nobody would need money. Money will be all over. Everybody will be rich. Nobody even will ask. You see money in the street, you don't even pick it up. Is that the scenario now? All of you are a bunch of liars, and you try, and all of you, this is telling us how powerful the name of the Messiah, that in order for somebody to be somebody, 
we have to use the name of the most powerful holy name on this universe. That is the name of the Messiah. And you know what I, I, I like about this story when Muhammad he spoke about it? That Jesus will come like a cowboy. I'm, like I'm assuming he will have like two guns. And uh, then, you know, uh, like he will tell the pig, like, turn your back. You know, like we, we, uh, uh, like we count in a three or something like that, you know. Uh, you know, like in the, uh, in the movies, you know. When when the when the cowboy he turned his back and then like Jesus he will come to the pig must be a very special pig this price you know and then this pig you know he will uh, Jesus will say to him you know what it's time and everybody like all of us we will be watching Muslim Christians Hindu Buddhists everybody. We have Mr. Pig, and which pig is that? I don't know. And things will happen, my friend. So right away, the Messiah, he will say to him, it is your time, Mr. Pig. It is your end. Be a man. It's a pig, you idiot. So the Messiah will come to kill the pig, stupid this cult is what about the goat and the chickens there's no problem with them and why Muhammad did not kill the pig hey Muslims why Muhammad did not kill the pig what's the problem they don't have guns at that time like I, the, the pig is so powerful huh like, come on, face it. Muhammad is so little, you know. The only thing he have is tomato, tomato sauce, like a Sheikh Uthman. Uh, the pig, he tried to attack him, you know. And uh, like he, uh, the, okay. So now Muhammad, he says, okay, I cannot fight you. I will send you Jesus, okay? Hey, pig, I promise you, I will send you Uncle Jesus. The pig, he says, no, look, be a man. Fight me right now, face to face, face to face. Muhammad, he say, no. no. Hold on, listen, listen. I cannot fight you, pig. Jesus, he come and he will fight you face to face. You coward, stop hiding. Come and fight me, Muhammad. No, I cannot. Only Isa, alayhi salam, is going to fight you face to face. What is that? Do we have any Muslim wanna tell us what? Uh, And why, why he want to break the cross? What is that exactly? Does that mean we will be without electricity? Because every electric column is a cross. I mean, your house is full of them. Look around you. There's no house can be built without a cross. No house, zero houses. I think the Messiah will be busy, like going in the street, breaking all the electric column. All of them, they are cross. And we have no electricity. You ask me, hey, CP, why you don't go in online? I said, how am I going to do that? He said, he, was, he broke all the column. You know? Stupid religion. This is a... What is that? And Mimi Hijab, he could not find a way to refute the guy except to him, saying, you know, Muhammad, he says he's the last prophet, but this guy, he is claiming to be the Messiah, not the last prophet. He's claiming, claiming to be the Messiah. So if you are saying that Muhammad said that he's the Muhammad is the last prophet, therefore the one who claimed to be the Messiah, he can't be the Messiah. This means you don't believe in the Messiah coming back. This is how hypocrite Mimi Hijab is and how low IQ he is. Any Abdul? Any Ahmadiyya? You know, I uh, I could not believe that there's a there's a time a human being will accept somebody 
to believe that he is the Messiah and the guy is dying because of diarrhea. And he spent most of his life sick, taking medicine and they bring doctors to him. And this is in their website. Imagine bringing doctor to the Messiah. How is stupidity work? And this is in their official website. The doctor coming, the doctor is leaving. The doctor is coming, the doctor is leaving. The doctor giving him medicine. People do massage to him. The people, they know you. I mean, the guy, uh, what happened to the power of the Messiah? Hmm? Abdul? You know, one of uh, one of the prophecies of Muhammad that before the judgment day, a fire will come from the ground. from Saudi Arabia. And this fire will be high to the neck of the camels. <laughs> oh boy. But this is supposedly will happen before the Messiah comes. And what make it more funny, that the land of Hijaz, the land of Saudi Arabia, even that will go maybe even to Yemen, you never know, will come and will throw the light of this fire all the way to Basra. Basra is in Iraq. And here you ask yourself, does that mean that the fire, the hell, is going to be in Mecca? Because you see, the light is going to be in Iraq, but the fire is where? Any Muslim can explain to us the stupidity? Muhammad, he just confirmed that his city is hell. Hmm? Any Abdul? One of the things I like, by the way, about the day of, I mean, the, the end of the time in Islam, that time will come that every one of us, every man, he will have 50 wives or 50 women to sleep with, which means the women, they will be 50 to 1. Like the ratio, the ratio of, uh, of men to women, they will, will be uh, 50 to 1. 50 women, one man. I hope that they will happen soon. 50 to 1? Hmm. So then what we will do? I mean, the Quran allows us to marry four wives. What we would do exactly? Muhammad said, the number of the men will decrease and women will increase so much so that every for every Man, 50 women. Do you see it? Any Muslim can explain to us how that will happen 
I mean, why 50? I mean, what? Why not for? Why not 49? Why? What about if it's 55? I mean, what? Like, are, all of us we will have 50, 50. All of us, all the world, all every man will have 50 women. Even me. I mean, this is not fair. I have more energy than all those men. What is the justice of Allah? So every one of us, even uh, Ahmed uh, Mirza Ghulam, even uh, Zak Zakir Naik will have 50 women. Zakir Naik, I don't think he can even satisfy one woman, half woman. 50? And why, why will that will happen? The men, when they have sex, they only have babies, they are females, what happened? Do you think this is because the nuclear weapon of Putin? He will change the gender? Hmm. Any Abdul? I am sure there's many men in the chat now, they are saying to themselves, oh boy, when that day will happen? Oh man. I hope it's tomorrow. But I'm not really satisfied with the number 50, to be honest with you. I mean, what? I mean, what he will lose if he make it 150? Isn't it more better? Do you remember the Muslim who called me in the other day? And he says to me, the, the prophecy about the Euphrates to be dry is true. And now Euphrates is dry. Go check it out. The Euphrates River is not dry. The Turkish, they built a huge dam on it. So now the water is coming to Iraq and Syria is little because the Turkish are di diverting all the water out of those countries. But Muhammad, he made a prophecy about it too. He claimed that uh, a mountain of gold will be found under the river of Euphrates. And by the way, he said, this is almost happening, not like in the future. Yushik, anyone who speak Arabic, he knew what Yushik mean. Very soon. Yushik is not soon, translation is false. Yushik, you can open any dictionary. It's about something happening, extre like extremely near. And 1400 years goes. And the prophecy never happened. The time is near when the river of Euphrates will dry up and veil a treasure of gold, a mountain of gold, actually. This is Muhammad. Any Muhammadan? Yeah, I think what will happen about the 50 women, like Putin will use nuke, you know, and then all of us, our penises will become radioactive, you know? Uh, so like when you do have sex, you do not need to turn on your electricity because it's radioactive, you know. Actually, you would hear like, zzz, you know, because radio, you know, radiation. And, uh, you know, because the penises will become radioactive, uh, uh, the sperm, the sperm will go all become female. Alhamdulillah. You know. Actually, I think, I think this is very scientifically true that, you know, when the like Putin, he used a nuclear weapon, your penis will begin, the only penis becomes shiny. By the way, your finger, no. Only, your penis and your nose, just take a note, please. And your testicles will not even, you know, like, I mean, testicles will might be affected, it will be more shiny, but it's your penis, you know? So, uh, this is why when you, like, have the sexual intercourse, you know, like, like, like electricity, you know, like, it's like when you are, like, doing welding, you know? So, like, even, 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 God forbid, Allah forbid, you might put it in, you could not take it off because it's it might weld. It's a lot of radioactive, a lot of energy, brother. You know, electricity. 
So like you put it in, you can't take it off. That's it. You know, it's like the connection. True story. This is a prophet of God. Any Muhammadan can explain to us the stupidity of this madness of religion? What is that? This is a prophet of God. I mean, if this is a prophet of God, who is a stupid here? Hmm? Hmm. Do Muhammad in you? When the Dajjal is going to come, you know, the Muhammad, he claimed about, he say, he, 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 he teach the Muslims about the false Messiah. But there is something very weird about this man. He is not sure if the false Messiah will come when he is alive between the Muslims or after. And here I ask myself, how come he do not know? Any Muhammadan can tell us why? The Antichrist, the messenger of Allah, S-A-W-S, -S, is like, you know, so-so. It's like a chicken, you know. So, uh, he said that the Dajjal, the Dajjal is the, supposedly Antichrist. But Muslims don't believe Antichrist, really. They believe that the Dajjal means the false messiah, a short name of Al-Masih Dajjal, which means the, the, the messiah, the liar, not the true messiah. Saying, if he come forth while I am among you, I shall be the one who will dispute with him on your behalf. Muslims, how come Muhammad is not sure if the Messiah, the false Messiah, will come during his time or not? Anyone? We have a Muslim saying, GUI, only 10% of CP view are Muslims. You know, GY, I like the percentage the Muslims they give us. Muslims are very specialist in percentage. Like Muhammad, he told us about the percentage, each man he will have 50 women. So I, I know where this is coming from. But I will give you an example about how Muslim percentage work. Can you watch this video with me and tell me how the percentage of Muslims function? Research has shown that over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. My friend, those are Muslims giving us percentage. This guy, his name is Ali Dawa. His wife, she feed him grape when he is debating and he wear a jacket made by the circus or for the circus. Claiming that the one who leave Islam every year is 100,000. But that will not even make one to half of a billion, you know. I mean, what a th hundred thousand? This is not really a big deal. But look, this guy, he said 100,000. Other Muslim, he have different percentage. 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. Our youth are full of doubt. And that is Muslim youth leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth... Stop. Here you see... How we can trust the Muslim percentage. One guy he says every year 100,000 Muslim leave Islam, which is not even one to 100%. Another Abdul, he have 24% of Muslim youth. But in case you do not know, Muslim youth is the majority of Muslims because they have a lot of kids. So Muslim youth present almost maybe 60% of the population or maybe 70%. We jump to different Muslim. Youth are leaving Islam. Your child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate. So instead of telling me how many Muslim they watch my videos, you potato, what about you watching my video and you can do nothing about it? Do we have any uh, Muhammadan? Become a Bothate. Your son is going to become a Bothate.
Because of you. They ask you, do Allah have body part? You say, who says so? You deny it. Then they go watch different video by a Muslim. He says, yes, Allah have body part. Muslim, they find that Muslim, they lie to each other. There's no dignity. There's no truth. You know. Do we have any Ahmadiyya? A follower of the guy who died because of his, his diarrhea? But look, hold on. Diarrhea, Ahmadiyya. Total harmony. I never thought about it this way. You know, sometimes I get inspiration. I think it's real. Diarrhea, Ahmadiyya. Tariya Ahmadiyya. Hmm. Look like those who claim to be the false messiah, they end with diarrhea. Or they claim to be the true messiah. Hmm. Thank God, I'm not going to claim to be the messiah, no way. That's a very ugly death, man. I mean, you end your life doing shit, shitting, like shit, 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 shit. People call you, hey, can I talk to you? I cannot, please, you know, because I'm doing poo, -poo now. Like, okay, like your wife, she come to you, she want to feed you. Oh, I want to feed me because I eat it from here. It go from there. You know, like, what the heck? You claim to be the Messiah, you end with diarrhea. Is that a reward, by the way? Hey, Muslim, do you think that Allah, he rewarded his prophet, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, so he gave him diarrhea? And what make it more funny, that those Muhammadan, they claim that this is actually a proof that he is the true messiah. Okay, what is the proof? Because he have the area. That's deep. I mean, think about it. If this guy, he don't have a diarrhea, there's no way he is the true messiah. So Allah wanted to prove to us that he's a true messiah by having a diarrhea. All right. Do we have any Abdul? <laughs> and by the way, do you know what the last thing Muhammad he did before he died? Any, anyone remember? Anyone remember? What the last thing Muhammad he did? <clears throat> he did piss. Ahmad Mirza Ghulam and Prophet of Allah, they share the same death. You know, when somebody, like, you know, when you watch movies, let us say about a king is dying or something, like, you will see the king saying something like, do this, do that, you know, and he feel like his death is coming. Muhammad, the last thing he want to do, he want to he wanna piss. Do you see it, Muhammadan? So why you make fun of Ahmad Mirza Ghulam? Both of them, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam and Muhammad, the last thing they did, it was shit. Prove me wrong. Anyone? As you see, this hadith is in front. And now they will say to you, oh, this is uh, Daif. My friend, it says Sahih. It's Daif. Okay, but it says Sahih. It's Daif. My friend, Abdul. It says Sahih. Sahih means authentic. It doesn't matter. It says Sahih or not. It is Daif. Ah, you cannot debate a liar. What you can say? Imagine the last day in my life. I'm talking to you live on air. I say, people, I feel something happening. People get worried about me. Christian Brands, what's happening? I say, I want to go to the bathroom. Hold on. Zip. You hear me zipping it. You know, I zip and zipping. And then, you know? And then I come back, I die. Unbelievable. 
That's that's hot. Shouldn't this guy he speak some wisdom before he die? Shouldn't he say something, you know? Hmm? He pee in a dish? Is that the same dish he eat on? Hmm. Anyway, so if any of you encounter with those uh, 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 false cult Ahmadiyya Antichrist religion, you know now how to refute them, how to answer them. It's very easy. This is a very stupid cult. And always those people are very sneaky. You know, they try to fool you by reading the Bible, right? So try to give their own interpretation for the book. Be careful with them. Tell them, we will not consider a person who died with his shit because of diarrhea. He himself was sick. He could not heal himself, claiming to be the Messiah. Don't waste our time. The Messiah, as we knew, when he, when a woman, she touched him, just she just touched him. She did not even ask. She was healed. Just touch his dress, his clothing. How many blind he made them see? How many sick he healed? How many people cannot walk? He made them walk. So how this person can claim such a thing? Be aware of false teachers, the Lord, he said. False prophets, false teachers. Be aware. Anyone who says to you, I am the Messiah, how we know that he is the Messiah or not? First of all, the coming back of the Messiah will be with the glory of his angels. So he will not appear the same as first time. He will come as the king of kings. He will come with thousands of angels. He will come on the cloud. He will not come in an airplane, neither in a car. He will come as a king of kings, as the king of heaven and earth. And the Messiah who came first time, who was able to do what nobody can do, the second coming of the Messiah, he will be the judge in the judgment day. No mercy. No mercy. The days of mercy is over. I remember there was a guy, I forgot his name. He called himself Jesus. I think he's from South America originally, and he lived in Florida, something like that. He had a bunch of girls with big boobs around them, plastic surgery. And even he ordered his churches, if you can call them a church, to put the sign of 666 on their hands and on their forehead. Imagine. And still there is people who follow him. This is how stupid a human being can be. He is the same as Al-Qazafi. All his, all the, his uh, companions are girls with very short skirt and their boobs is coming out. Still there is somebody believe that this person is the Messiah. Human being is very stupid, isn't it? But everybody will pay for the price for his stupidity. God, he gave you a brain. It's up to you. God, he gave you a brain. If I am the Messiah, I will do what the Messiah do. Very simple. Very simple. These days, we have many churches, they claim that they have a prophet. Prophet, what do you mean you have a prophet? What exactly is prophet? He do he receive a revelation? You know, we have a prophet in our church. Okay, prophet, etc. Okay, what does prophet he prophesy? What 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 exactly his job in this earth? People are really weird. Don't let them fool you. Uh, do we have any Muslim before we uh, 
because I have diarrhea, to be honest with you, I feel like I became a prophet now. Because obviously this is the proof of the Ahmadiyya. Guys, did you save the link about uh, the Arabic link and the English link about the diarrhea? Did you save it? The one that says that the proof that he is a messenger of Allah, that Allah, he uh, give him a certificate. This is a proof that he is the true Messiah. Is what? Is giving him the diarrhea. I mean, how amazing. Do you guys still have the link? Or you guys, you lost the link. I know you, you lost the link, don't you? You remind me of Muhammad. Allah, he gave him revelation, he lost the revelation. And then he made a verse in the Quran says, if I like Allah, he caused me to forget revelation, he will give me something similar or better, don't worry, be happy. Allah caused, uh, Allah caused revelation to be forgotten? How come? How come? Hmm? This is how Allah he caused revelation to be forgotten? So Allah he sent revelation and then Allah after he sent revelation he caused the revelation to be forgotten. I am really truly convinced with this uh, something, you know, because who can do that except Allah? It's a revelation. He make you forget the revelation. It's a revelation. That's amazing. Who can who can defeat such a knowledge? The God who sent revelation and he wants you to forget the, his revelation. What is the wisdom? What is the logic? Any Mohammedan? Hmm. Well, until now we have zero Muslim texting us. Look like today is very dry. Last call, any Muslim would like to call us? Forget about Ahmadiyya, no problem. If you are a Muslim Sunni or Shia, you want to say something, we will take one call. Anyone? I feel like today I want to convert to Islam. But honestly, I want to get more women. You know? And you know, I cannot wait really. To see how those boobs look like, the one who Allah promises in the Quran. You know, by the way, Allah is very caring, to be honest with you. I mean, look, He even promised us not even women, He promises only boobs. If you read the verse about the boobs, He never said, I will give you women with boobs. He said, Kawaib, which means firm boobs. So it looked like Allah will give us boobs without the women and thank Allah for this I mean who need the women they give you a headache man buy us this do shopping for that pay for the credit card women all what we need from Allah is the boobs Allah he knew exactly what make you happy he don't want you to give you the women just get the boobs so it's like you open the box delivery boing 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 boobs big boobs with nipples you know, forget the nipples you know I don't know if those nipples, the function, they are real or plastic, I'm not sure. But the verse, you see here it says, women, in the verse, nowhere it says the word women. In Arabic it says, kawaibun atraba, no women. Kawaib, kawaib, you know kaaba, you say kaaba, kawaib, the same, kaaba. It's a cube, breast like a cube. I always want to have a breast like a cube. I'm sick of the round one. I mean, come on, we need some change. Just think about it. All women, they have wrong breast. This will be a revolutionary to have a cube breast. How beautiful. 
Now we have a square. No, a cube. Allah said a cube, not square. I mean, almost a square. Hmm? This is God promise. This is God is talking, right? So you Muslim Sunni, you laugh at Ahmad Mirza Ghulam and his stupidity, but you don't laugh at this. And look, Allah will give us full cup. I was worried really that the cup is not full to the brim. I mean, like, just think about it. But listen, listen, you know, those Christians really, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the kuffar, I don't know what's wrong with them. They are sick. Do you see the promise of Allah? He will give you a full cup to the brim. Now, think about it. I need to use my art now to explain to you what's happening because most of you are naive, not smart like me. I'm an Arab, you know. Not all of you are, none of you is an Arab. <laughs> Come on, you can't even compare, you know. I'm not being racist here, but this is the truth. We are the smartest between all mankind, you know. We are the one who discover that the ant, she is a bird, and she speak with Solomon. Okay, so look, uh, we will have a cube breast. This is the breast, breast. Okay, and they are a cube, and this is the nibble. I don't know if the nibble will be here. Let us make them here, or maybe they will be there. I'm not sure. Actually, here is better nibble. Okay, and then next to it, there is a cup is full to the brim by the way i was born as an artist in case you do not notice i don't know i mean my my mother she told me like you know when the the woman she was like delivering me out i was drawing in her hand you know like she put her hand to grab me i was drawing like she got her hand out she have a tattoo like what the heck so you know okay this true true story by the way so this is the cup brother and it's full to the brim oh, oh, just think about it how many of us will be so upset if the cup is not full to the brim? To the brim. Like brim, 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 you know? Full, the whole cup is full. This is the promise of Allah. So we have a cube of breast and a cup full to the brim. My dream come true. Finally. This is the wish of every man. So if those Christians, those sick Christians, they say to you, this is stupid, this is because they are jealous. Tell them why your uh, God huh, did not give you. Uh, it looked like a bullet. I mean, I don't know what I did draw. It looked like nine millimeter or 45 bullet. Let me fix it, man. I mean, what kind of a brim? What the heck is that? Uh, okay, hold on. My cup is not working, guys. You know, uh, excuse me, because I was busy. Uh, you know, I, I taught Picasso how to draw. You know, Picasso? Bika, by the way, I call him Bika. Because, you know, when I taught Bika how to draw, I said to him, so, like you learn how to do it, so? So later the people, they call him like Bika so. So anyway, so Allah will give us, let us go here, to the brim. This is the cup to the brim. Okay. I'm trying to do it for you in three dimensions. You know, three dimensions. And this is the cube breast here. The cube breast. Look how beautiful those breasts are. And unique. There's no there's no breast like this in the world these days, you know? And they will never happen. And this is the nipple. And I think the nipple, I, I would like to make them bloom, you know? Because from biting, they will get to bloom, man. I mean, imagine how much biting will be doing like every day, every day, every day, for eternity, you know? So there's no way they will be red. They will be blue from biting, like, like a, you know, from biting mark. Broom, 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 broom. And then, so you bite the breast, you drink from the brim. You bite the breast, you drink from the brim. Perfect. And where we are in the garden? So just think about it. Garden, cup to the brim, and cube breast. And you are telling me Allah is not God? I mean, you people are really stupid. Isn't it obvious? So true, true, it's grown people. And not only that. We have a grape, and those are grapes so close to our hand. We do not even look how really. No, we Arab are very lazy, to be honest with you. So the grape is so close to our hand. You don't need to move your ass and grab it. It's just there. What's wrong with you people? Oh, by the way, I should not draw this life in front of you, because now many of you will learn the secret of a drawing, and they will learn... Like Bika saw, Mr. Bika, how to draw.
you know, and many of you like come here, learn from me how to draw, and then they open their channel teaching people how to draw a cube breast. Just wait. You will see people copying it. You know? No sound. And my friend, move your head from the cube, the breast cube, you will hear me. The nipples are so big, the breast, you put your head between the two breasts, this would happen. This is why it's blocked your ears. You cannot hear me. The guy is saying there's no sound. I mean, look what, how you can hear me anymore? I'm like, look at this. You are looking at the printing. You are getting so excited now. You, you lost your hearing. It's obvious, you know. Do we have any Muslim want to make a comment? I mean, a God, he gave us a promise of a cup full to the brim. Brim what? I mean, why, what does that mean exactly? A cup full to the brim. I will be sitting with my women here, like, you know, and we have a cup to the brim. By the way, we can't touch it. We can't touch this cup because we need to keep it to the brim. Because if you drink from it, you are going to not be to the brim. Just think about it. So when Allah, he said, is going to be to the brim, obviously he want to keep it there like the, the brim. Don't even touch it. So why, well, what, what the cup for? Hmm? And the funny, the funny, look, the Quran predict that we are going to say this is a lie. Hmm. Our signs are false. Do you see those kuffar, the Christians? They claim that our sign is false. The Christian don't want to believe that Allah will give us a few boobs and the cup to the brim. Hmm. Kuffar, Allah. They treat the sign of Allah like false. They don't want to believe, brother. Disgusting people. Hey, Muslims, what is the sign? We did not see those boobs anyway. I mean, when you say that treated our signs as false, what is the sign? Shouldn't you give us the sign first? Somebody promising me in the future cube boobs and a cup to the brim and a bracelet from gold what is the sign this is a sign now i mean i promise you tomorrow next 1000 million a year and you call this is a sign that's amazing sign you're so good muhammad i mean who can beat muhammad with his signs man i mean the guy he gave us all the signs all the sign you want, any sign, just ask him, he give it to you right away. You want big boobs? Here we go, I give you a sign. You want a cup to the brim? I give you a sign. But we did not see boobs, we did not see sign, we did not see the virgin, we did not see the genie, we did not see the angel who came to Muhammad, we did not see anything. And, and then the Muslim, they say we want to do shahada, which means we witness to Muhammad. So they saw nothing, they witnessed nothing, but they witnessed to Muhammad that he is giving a sign. What is the sign? Is that an exit sign in the highway? Is it? Hmm. Uh, and by the way, everything is preserved in the record. Okay, where is the, hey Muslims, as long as everything is preserved in the record, where is the Injil? Muslims, they give us headache, keep saying that your book is corrupt, your book is corrupt. Okay. The Quran says everything is preserved in the record. Can you publish it, brother? Why Allah preserving it in his record? I mean, shouldn't the Injil be given to all mankind? Why it's in the record? Why? What we would do with the record? Oh boy. Did we have a good time, guys? Shall we go for today or you want more time? Hmm? Okay, I think females, they want me to leave. Uh, the only one who wants me to stay is the male, because they don't want to this drawing to disappear. The boob, the cube of you. Every one of those males now in the chat, he will go to sleep. You, you see the snoring? Like, he's, and he's snoring, he's saying. 
Let's mean a cube. This is nipple. You know, this is the language of men. You guys, you female, you don't understand it. You know, just female, they don't understand anything about us. You know, I'm telling you, only us men, we have our own language when we snore. Snoring the man, he tell you what he's dreaming about. Huh? Listen to him. Okay, this is long, long, long cube boob. Oh, that's really big, you know? And then like, when you wanna go to describe the nipple, it's like, depend in the man what he's saying. Like, if they are round, like, I don't know, like, you know, like apple or something like, like me. It's like, this is the end. Like, he's making circle, okay? We, finished, you know? So like, if you are a woman and your husband is snoring next to you, you wanna like, you wanna know what exactly he's, you know, maybe he's not even dreaming about you, you know, maybe about somebody else, you know, you never know. You can translate, you can, uh, by the way, I have a book, it's called The Explanation and the Translation of the Language of Men Snoring. Okay, this is a true book. You buy it, you learn how your husband, you, you will know everything about him, where he, what he's thinking, what he is doing, being your back, when he, that's it, you know, the, like everything. Alhamdulillah. Any Muhammadan? If Muhammad is said that, they will believe him. I say that, they don't believe me. This is the truth. Muhammad, he said the most stupid things ever. They accept. Hmm? As an example, I'm telling you about the language of the snoring, right? How Muhammad received the Quran, who remember? Anyone remember? Muhammad, he said, He received it as the sound of a bell. As what? The sound of a bell. Mm. I thought the Quran was in Arabic. No, brother. The original Quran, brother, he came to Prophet Muhammad as a sound of a bell. Mm. And I was wondering why Muhammad, he kept listening to the bell when we were in the school together. He was receiving Quran. And when the phone discovered by the kuffar, he was receiving Quran too. And when we got the cell phone, Muhammad, he was receiving Quran too. Mm. Al-Fatiha. Yeah, this is chapter of Al-Fatiha. And then we asked the Muslims, as long as Muhammad, he received Quran as a sound of a bell. How it become Arabic? I mean, the guy here received a sound of a bell. We got that. But how the bell become Arabic? The answer is very, very, very strong. See? Very simple. Very simple. Muhammad received a sound of a bell and then it became Arabic. By the way, this is a message from Prophet the filthy Putin. He is sending to his men in Ukraine, telling them, sorry, we send you with a bunch of our junk trucks and junk trunk, uh, 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 tanks, which they cannot even go in the mud. I apologize, you are dead. Signature, Vladimir Putin, Aka Allah. This is religion. I mean, the guy obviously is mentally ill. And especially if we knew that the guy he claimed that Allah, sorry, Shaitan, Shaitan, 
He is the instrument of shaitan is the bill. If you type the word bill in the search engine of this stupid website, you will see that shaitan, he used the bill as an instrument. Look, the prophet B.B.U.H. said, the bill is one of the musical instrument of Satan. Okay, how the bill is the one of the musical instrument of Satan and then Muhammad received Quran as a sound of a bell. And by the way, this is a proof, brother, that the Christians are satanic. This is why they sing for us Muslims, jungle bells, jungle bells, jungle all the way. See? Bells? How dare you? Don't you know that the bells is the musical instrument of shaitan? Hey Muslims, why the, why the bell is the musical instrument of shaitan in the same time Muhammad received Quran in a sound of a bell, which means the one is playing that instrument is Allah. Maybe Allah, he sent his instrument, satanic instrument to Muhammad. What a stupid cult. I love the Chinese when they said he left as a donkey, never came back as a horse. I think they were talking exactly about Muhammad. All right, I think we have enough for today. We have zero Muslim to call us and not too many listening. And you guys, look, the number, look, the number decreased. I stopped talking about the boobs. The number, we lost like 300 people. We talk about boobs, the number is like 300 people more. Muslims, they come from everywhere. Just put a picture on the thumb of a, of, of a female. Ah, so all the Muslims will come. Like, you know, uh, you know, I got an idea. We got uh, like a woman, she is like maybe Muslim, they like white women, and they love women. they are obsessed like Muhammad, and Allah is obsessed with white women. So we get like a, a, a white women picture in the thumb, and it says like title, who wanna debate me? And a woman like wearing short skirt, etc. Who wanna debate me about Islam? You can imagine, you cannot imagine how many thousand Muslims will line up to debate to debate the thumb. A thumb. The second Christian prince he appear. Jungle bells, jungle bells, jungle all the way. Bye bye bye, bye bye bye, bye bye bye. Hey, oh, what a crazy cult. Someone wanna call me? This is his name, someone? Hmm? This is remind me of the Prophet Muhammad. Hey Prophet, where do you see the Quran? I'm someone. What's his name? I don't know. Khadija, she took him to her cousin. And then the cousin took him to the cousin. And the cousin, he asked the other cousin. And then they took him to Warak al -Nufar. And they told him, someone squeeze Muhammad. That one who squeezed Muhammad, nobody knows who is he, even Muhammad. But Waraka, who never saw the one, never been there, he told him, ah, this is a breed. What is killing me, how Waraka al -Nufar, he got to know that this is a breed and Muhammad, he did not figure out. Can you believe it? Muhammad himself. All right. Look like we lost connection for a few seconds. I apologize for that. Uh, you know, one of the nipples of those boobs we draw stuck with my internet cable. So I was like trying to grab the nipple. And by mistake, I grabbed the cable with it. And you know, like we lost uh, connection. Okay. But then I noticed that the nipple was so close to the, you know, the, I was trying to do it without telling you because, you know, like I'm, I'm not going to tell you I'm grabbing the nipple, you know. But uh, it was very close. I mean, there's the nipple here, and there is the. Let me, let me, let me uh, draw for you how my modem look like, okay? Because many of you now get upset because I lost connection and you could not hear me, and you think I did, I did that. Honestly, it was an accident. Okay, this is my modem. This is my modem. Okay, it's more dumb because it's dumb. You know, I mean, they tell you like the speed is like a 300 something, and then you did not even get 10. Anyway, so this is the modem, you know, and the, the modem, there is like here, uh, there is a bomb here. And this is what confused it with, uh, made me confuse it, like confused with the, uh, uh, the nipples, because my modem is like, it's like that, but I have it standing up, you know. This is the modem standing up. If you notice, I, I, I draw the, 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 the cube uh, boobs the same, they, are, they look the same. So I thought I'm grabbing the boobs, but by mistake, I grabbed the modem, you know. So like this is what happened, I lost connection, and now I think you understand. But then I noticed like there is like, uh, you know, there is a here, you know, as you know, those uh, uh, no modem, you know, uh, there is a cable here. 
there's cable, you know, cable, cable, you know? Yeah, cable, there's a lot of cable here. This nipple here don't have cable. But it was too late, you know? Like I was trying to grab it, I grabbed the cable, the cable came out, you guys lost sound, and now we explain to you in a very technical details how we lost the sound. I hope you understand. Uh, we have the best customer service here. And Allah is our guidance to explain to you things. Allah, he inspired me to tell you the true story where we are behind, the, you know, losing the sound. Can you resend the link for what? The nipples? I mean, those people, they want to link the nipple to everything now. Unbelievable. What the heck? Is that? Come on, come on, people, come on. There's, there's ladies are watching. Aren't you shy to say to me, give me the link for the nipples? I mean, come on. Just like, these ladies are watching here. Aren't you shy as a man to ask for the link for the nipples? I mean, what, what? Are you married? Are you married? You are married and you are asking for the link for the nipples? How do you explain that to your wife? Just wait until your wife, you know, pray to Allah that your wife, she will not see the chat, that you are asking me for the link. It's crazy, people. Are you aware of the risk involved with this request? Do you know how sharp the nails of your wife? Trust me, she was sharp in her nails for the last month. Don't you notice every day she's going to the other side? You know, when you're like, psh, 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 you know, like what she's doing, like she's sharp. In, psh, 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 psh. I did wash dishes, you know. And okay, what you are doing, she's sharpening the nails. They don't sharp them for fun. Some men, they think that women, they sharp their nails just for beauty. <laughs> you are mistaken. What's wrong with you? They are exist for a reason, brother. Just get your neck ready. Uh, somebody saying CP is an Arab, I think. Please don't think. That will hurt. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how in the world you discover that? CP is an Arab, I think. How I am an Arab and I speak with a sister. I am, my name is Zakir Naik, and I spit a lot. And the other person is named Christian Prince, and I get embattled all the time. First of all, he said that aspirin have nothing to do with headache. I prove it to you that the best aspirin is the Quran. You read the Quran, you read the same thing. What the heck? Dr. Zakir Naik, he don't use aspirin no more. He used the Quran for headache. You listen to the Quran, the Quran come in your head. Not only the headache will go, even your head will go with it. Unbelievable. Anyway, do I speak the language of the birds? My friend, you are wrong. It's the birds who speak my language. What's wrong with people? The birds, they try to copy me. I go outside, you see the birds saying, they are trying to copy me. Everything I do, people try to copy me. I am very humble, by the way. They try to copy my drawing. They, they, they copy my videos. Look how, go and search how many people copy my, they copy everything I do. The same, they copy the behavior of the prophet. The prophet was praying on a, on a dead person. A Jewish walked by. He said to him, this is how we do it. The prophet, he said, sit down, sit down, act differently. Like, what the heck? Have you ever heard of a prophet of God? He'd been taught how to pray by his God, supposedly. Just because a Jew, he said to him, this is how we do it. In a second, the prophet, he decided to change how to pray. In a second, the guy, the Jewish guy, he just said to him, this is how we do it. Muhammad, right away, he said, sit down, sit down, act differently. Like, what the heck? I mean, if you are a prophet and Allah told you to pray this way, so why you want to act differently? So what happened, Muhammad? He noticed that the Jews, they're getting busted. You are, you are trying to copy us. Obviously, you are copying us. We got you busted. So Muhammad, because he have a needle in his ass, he said, oh, oh, they got me busted. So right away, he said, sit down, sit down, act differently. But this is a prayer. This is how Allah he told you to pray. So if Muhammad is holding his penis and he is pissing, and a Jew, he walked by, and he said to him, this is how we do it. Muhammad will stop using his penis no more. 
he will piss from his knee, from his knee, or from his ears, from his knee. I mean, this is weird. How you can piss from your knees? Oh, Muhammad is a prophet. He can do that, you know. The guy he just said sit down. I mean, he just said this is how we. Do. He did not say anything. But Muhammad, because he knew that he is false, he knew he is copying the Jews. Right away, he changed the way to pray. I mean, shouldn't he wait for wait at least for the angel to tell him? Sit down, sit down. What the heck? In a second, he changed the prayer. Wahira, he wrote the Quran? <clears throat> I don't think so. I think the one who wrote the Quran is not all of it, most of it, until he died, is Waraq ibn Nawfal. Yeah, you can read my books and get more information. Janet. Finally, CP, I have got your life. Sending love from Scotland. You know, Janet, don't send me love from Scotland because I don't understand Scottish. Man, the British accent. You know what? I taught Shakespeare how to speak English, to be honest with you. I'm very humble. I don't like to talk about it. You know, I taught Mr. Shakespeare. By the way, his real name is Shakespeare. He's my cousin. He's, re he's not even in English. You know, I mean, we send him there, you know, like... A refugee. So anyway, we send him to uh, 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 Scotland, and he start drinking Scottish whiskey. I was so upset. And why? Because the Scottish people they told him that this is juice. And my cousin Shakespeare, he is just naive, man. I mean, you go to Sh you go to Scotland, you know, they say to you crazy stuff, you know. So like now, she's she remind me of what, what the Scottish people did to my cousin, Mr. Sheikh Esper. He's my cousin, he's an Arab, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, he is the one who uh, wrote the story of Tom and Jerry, like, you know, when they chase each other, like, you know, and, uh, you know, things, yeah. So, finally, CP, I have got your life. She want to get me dead. I'm telling you, women are, uh, women are scary. I, I run away from them. I got your life. Explain this one to me. There is something behind the scene, under the world. You have, you have to understand the language of the women. I got your life. Like, until now, I got your life. Two minutes from now, bye-bye. You are not life no more. Unbelievable. And where, I mean, look, the conspiracy, how far it is from Scotland. And let me pray to Allah to protect me from the nail of women. And that's concern and, and their conspira con conspira conspiracy, you know. I mean, you know the thing. Joe Biden, he told me by the way how to like solve any problem. Like, if somebody asks me a question which I cannot answer, you know, like you know the thing. You know, like that's it. Yeah, it's solved. Well, thank you, Jenny. Thank you, you're welcome, my dear sister. But as you see, we are dry today. There is no Abdul. Hi from Australia. What's wrong with those people? I mean, you know, guys, what's wrong with you? Allah, he put you in the Garden of Eve. What's wrong with you? One in Scotland, one in Australia. Ah, but I thought Allah, he sent Adam and Eve, oh, sorry, Adam, to Sri Lanka. How in the world you end in Australia? What's wrong with you? We should go back to our route, to Sri Lanka. You ask the Muslim, why in the world Allah he sent Adam to Sri Lanka? Hey Muslims, any Muslim can tell us? I mean, from all this earth, Allah could not find a place except Sri Lanka? Hmm? You know the video where of Tim Inc? Sirling Lenka. Sirli Lenka. Amazing. From amongst those. Now, if we look at Adam alayhi salam, he came down onto the earth. He was sent to the earth. There's a question. Where did he land? Yeah, where, where? He was he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed, meaning he dropped. No, but Allah placed him on the earth. Uh -huh. This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he says. That Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. He came down in what is known as the Indo Pak subcontinent. Precisely. Precisely. Sri Lanka.
to look what happened to us now, brother. We have our sister in Scotland, our brother in Australia, but our grandfather in Sri Lanka. I mean, what happened to our family? Why we are scattered everywhere? Our grandfather in Sri Lanka, and we are everywhere. It's a punishment from Allah. By the way, Muhammadan, I mean, the guy, Adam, he sent in Sri Lanka, how he crossed to Mecca, he did Hajj 40 years. Sri Lanka is an island, in case you do not know. Unbelievable. Oh, Lord have mercy. And, and by the way, where Eve was landing, do you know where Eve landed? This is, this is the most horrible thing can happen to you unless you hate your wife. Adam was landed in Sri Lanka and Eve landed in Saudi Arabia. Look, what the heck? There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. Mm. If you go there, mm. you will find it green and beautiful oh. as though it is not from this earth. But it is. I'm not trying to imply anything. But I'm Muslim, you have to be careful when you speak to Muslim. Otherwise, they will kill you. I'm not trying to imply anything. Okay, don't kill me. Don't. They will kill him just saying it is so beautiful maybe because the Sri Lankans have kept it that way but it's a beautiful place oh. it is it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place we don't know for certain that that's man so listen he, they knew for certain that it's a Sri Lanka but they do not know for certain if it's the peak of Adam where he landed uh, and there you will see a big foot this is in the temple of Buddhas it's like six foot foot Adam he was you know, when I look at that, uh, I mean, I don't want to bother you with those things. But all of you, you are genius, you know, all of you. I mean, you are genius, you know, like, yeah. So, if you notice here with me, uh, let me see the picture. Okay, this is the picture of Prophet Adam Foot. Brother, let me show it to you. All of you, you will convert to Islam in two seconds. So Allah, He sent Adam in Sri Lanka. And this is a Buddha guy. I don't know what he is doing there. I mean, come on, Adam belonged to us Muslims. Somebody talk to him. And this is the foot of Adam. Once I asked the Muslims, why there's only one foot? He could not answer me. But because I'm super smart, I said to myself, maybe when Adam, he landed, he lost the other shoe. So he was jumping over one foot. Or Adam, when he landed, he had only one foot. And later he grew the second one. Because I could not find why there's only one foot. And okay, let us say even he have one foot. Okay, this guy, he stand there forever. He don't move. So how come there's a mark for a foot, but there's no other marks? What happened to the, the footsteps of Adam? There's only one foot. One, just one mark. What the heck? I'm telling you, Islam is very convincing. I mean, I don't know if you are, you know, kuffar, you kuffar, you don't agree with me, because you're kuffar. Allah, he seal your heart, the Quran says. Stupid people. Hey, Muslim, do you know why there's only one foot? What is the second foot? And why he don't move? I mean, the guy, what, ha what happened? Me. And look what the Muslim, they say, under the big star, brother. This is... This is the footprint measuring 5.7 by 2.6. Believed to be the footprint of a prophet Adam, peace be upon him. He was 60 cubit tall. I mean, his foot is really small compared to his size. The guy is 60 foot tall and his foot is only 5 foot. Man. 
This is what Muhammad told him, what you can say. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. And then if you get bored of what we do here and subscribe, so Allah will bless you. Right? And maybe may Allah this can make us discover the second foot of Adam because until now it's missing. And if you find the shoes of Adam, it's very easy to find them, by the way. It's not like Cinderella. You know, like you know the story of Cinderella, what I hate about it. I mean, okay, there's only one girl who can wear it. Like, yeah, right. I mean, come on, Cinderella is like everybody. Here, this is the true Cinderella. His shoe cannot fit anybody. He is the only one, his foot is 5.7. So we do not need to like ask all the men in the world to come and try it. There's only one man in the world. He have 5.7. <laughs> I know, I know, you hate me, I know. I know uh, you hate me for the way I think and it's very embarrassing to be a Muslim. It's not my fault if Islam is so stupid and I'm not stupid like you, what I can do, Scooby Scooby do. Huh? This is religion? Seriously, this is religion? And you believe in that? That Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka? Why not in Canada? Huh? Did Allah do to make it appear? Hey, yeah, yeah, this is a different video, hold on. We will save you for later. Now, we want to find out before we finish for today, where is the wife of Adam? I'm already, I'm really worried about Adam. You know, like you are single and alone in this world? That's really horrible. At that time, there's no dating website, you know, to go like to for dating or like you know, hello, how are you doing? Where are you from? You know, like and and uh, etc. You know, there is no. So how he met with Eve? She didn't walk too much, but she also tried to look for Adam alayhi salam. No, that does not mean that women are not. Uh, okay, so hold on, hold on. We missed this part. But it's a beautiful place. It is. It is set that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? Where, where? In Jidda. Oh boy. Where is Jidda? Jidda is in the Arabian Peninsula, in what we know today as Saudi Arabia. And what is the meaning of Jidda or Jadda or Judda? It means the grandmother. It is named... That's deep. Jidda is called the grandmother because Hawa landed there. So Adam, <laughs> I mean, what happened to a human being? How stupid a human being can be? This is religion, and this is a prophet telling us what happened. And how lucky I am, you know, to be Adam at that time, and my wife. I land in Sri Lanka, and I would say to Allah, thank you, Allah, finally I get rid of Eve. I really, really am sick of her. She is the one who kicked me out of heaven. You know, she made me eat from the apple. I told her I like ice cream. She said, no, you need to eat apple. I said, I like ice cream. And then she convinced me to eat the apple. And bing, bingo. Finally, I got rid of her. He, uh, why Allah, he landed Eve in Jeddah and Adam in Sri Lanka? I will leave this question to the Abdul. And you know what? Allah and the Abdul Prophet, they know best. Think about it. Twice or thrice. Don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon if you like to receive notification. I noticed that lately the admins are not posting, so you can subscribe. Uh, the in YouTube they always try to uh, like suppress, oppress whatever you call it, our channel, so we don't receive enough of you. But if you subscribe to Patreon, you will receive notification as soon as we go live on air. So if you care, feel free to join us there. Subscribe. You do not need to donate and just to get notification if you like. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all, and we will see you soon again. Christ is Lord, Islam is a scam, and we prove it every day. Thank you. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is 
without contradictions that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. In it. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him, 